Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in to my sermon about God's love. I would like to begin with a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, bringing us all here. Please bless everyone, please protect us, and please let um, someone get something out of this. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I would like to begin with a question. Do we truly know what love is? So how does the dictionary define love? Well, it defines it as strong affection, for someone arising out of kinship or personal ties. But how does the Bible define love? Well, let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapters 13, verses four to seven. And it says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, love does not pray itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Now, obviously, these two definitions are different, mostly because the world has a distorted view of what love actually is. The dictionary only goes into the affection part of love, while the Bible goes into the characteristics of what love actually is. This is mainly due to the misunderstanding and overusing um, of the word love. And I read something interesting in a Time Magazine article, and it said, Love should be seen not as a feeling, but as an enacted emotion. You see, this is a big reason why m many married couples can say that they love each other, but still end up divorced, while parents can claim that they love their children, but still abuse or neglect them. So I can um, tell my friends I love them, but still only talk to them when it benefits my needs. You see, that, that isn't love. Real love will make you uncomfortable. It'll get you out of your comfort zone. It takes a lot of commitment, effort, and patience. And real love is doing something for someone and not expecting anything in return. You see, this real love is talked about in the Bible, but it presents it as the perfect love of God. Now, let's turn to Romans chapter 8, verses 38 to 39. And it says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You see, God's love, God's greatest act of love, is seen through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. He sent Jesus to save us from sin. And he first hinted at this when Adam and Eve sinned, when after they ate the fruit. Instead of destroying them and restarting, he promised them a savior that would come and save us all. Now, we can still see God's love in our everyday lives, but we might just think about them as everyday things or coincidences. One of them might be waking up every day. Not many people can do it, unfortunately, but God loves us and he allows us to wake up every day. It might look like a friend checking up on you during a rough time when they don't know it, but God, that's obviously God's love right there, too. Now, we always read about God's love in the Bible, and we always sing about it in songs. But why should we care? Why should we show his love to the people around us? Well, let's turn to First John chapter 4, verse 8. And it says, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. You see, this here states God's main characteristic, love. And we should show others God's love or God through our actions. But how can we do this? Let's turn to 1 John chapter 3, verses 18. Verse 18, my bad. And it says, My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. But what can these deeds of love look like? Let's turn to verse 16. By this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brother. You see, you don't have to physically lay down your life for someone, but instead this might look like laying down your popularity, your time, or your money. This might look like instead of making fun of someone for messing up or for doing something weird, you talk to them. It might look like setting aside your problems with someone you find annoying or you just don't like and actually talking to them and starting a friendship. It might look like being a shoulder to cry on for someone who gets neglected. 
or it just might look like sending a text to your friends or calling them or buying them food. You see, we always want good change and peace and a good vibe, vibe between everyone. But you see, we can't just wait for opportunities to show love to others to fall in our lap. We have to go and look for them. This might look like donating money to charity instead of buying the new iPhone you wanted, or it might look like helping out your, in your community instead of just sitting on a couch all day and watching Netflix. You see, love is a force that binds us all together. It's tear down, it tears down walls and brings us all together to solve our problems. And I would like to conclude with 1 John chapter 4, verse 11. And it says, Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. And I would like to encourage you to show more love to the people around you. Thank you.